bimanual examination, which may also be referred to as pervaginal or PV examination, is an internal examination of the vagina, which also enables the assessment of the uterus, fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Bimanuals are carried out for various indications, including irregular bleeding, menstruation-related problems, pelvic pain, dyspareunia, and abnormal vaginal discharge. But before we carry on, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content releases. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can save 20% off Surgical Teaching Premium. Okay, let's make a start. After washing our hands, we introduce ourselves to the patient, clarify their identity, explain what the examination involves and why it's being performed. We should then explain that the examination may be a little bit uncomfortable, but will be over fairly quickly. And then finally, we should obtain verbal consent. If the patient hasn't already emptied their bladder at this point, then we should ask the patient to do so before we proceed as otherwise, a full bladder may make palpation of the pelvic organs slightly more challenging. Given the nature of the examination, it's important that we also have a chaperone present, and they should also be introduced to the patient. For the examination, the patient should be exposed from the waist down. We then ask the patient to lie on their back, with her ankles together and her knees spread apart as much as is comfortably possible. We then put on some gloves, and begin by inspecting the external genitalia. We need to note the pattern of the pubic hair distribution, the labia majora and labia minora for any abnormalities such as thickening or swelling. And then we need to expect the clitoris, urethral meatus, and the vaginal opening, looking for any discharge, redness, scars, ulcerations, or atrophy. We then ask the patient to strain down, or cough, and inspect for the presence of any vaginal prolapse. We apply lubricating gel onto the index and middle fingers of our right hand. Whilst the index and middle fingers will be extended, the thumb should be abducted, and the ring and little finger will be flexed towards the palm, as you can see here. We insert the fingers with the palm facing laterally, before then rotating our hand 90 degrees so the palm faces upwards. Palpating the walls of the vagina with our fingers, they should feel moist, supple, and slightly wrinkled due to the transverse ridges formed by the vaginal rugae. Next, we locate the cervix with the tips of our fingers. The cervix, which is typically pointing downwards within the upper vagina, should normally feel smooth and have a similar consistency to the cartilaginous tip of the nose. We should assess the mobility of the cervix by gently moving it from side to side. Any tenderness or excitation when performing this may suggest the presence of an infection. After feeling the cervix, we then gently palpate the fornices, which lie either side of the cervix. The next step in our examination is to palpate the pelvic gynaecological structures, starting with the uterus. Whilst keeping our index and middle fingers of the right hand within the upper vagina, we place our left hand upon the suprapubic region of the patient's abdomen. Approximately four centimeters or two fingers width, superior to the pubic symphysis. Using our right index and middle fingers to push the cervix upwards, we simultaneously press the fingers of our left hand into the suprapubic region towards our right hand. We should be able to locate the uterus between our two hands, allowing us to palpate it and note its features, including its shape, size, position, surface consistency and characteristics, and also the presence or absence of tenderness. Typically, an antiverted uterus will be easily palpated. However, a retroverted uterus may not be so easily palpable. We next want to palpate the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. 
To do this, we position our internal index finger and middle finger in each lateral fornix. With the pulp of the fingers facing towards the anterior surface of the abdominal wall. We place our external fingers first over the right iliac fossa and then press inwards and downwards towards the fingers of the right hand, which are simultaneously pressing upwards and laterally to the patient's right side. This will enable us to palpate the ovary in the fallopian tubes, which we collectively refer to as the adnexal structures. When feeling the adnexal structures, we should be noting their size, mobility, shape, and any tenderness. Normal ovaries are ovoid in shape, firm, and often palpable. However, normal fallopian tubes are typically not palpable, and thus, if they are palpable, this would be suggestive of the presence of a pathology. We then reposition our left hand over the patient's left iliac fossa and repeat the process, pressing inwards and downwards towards the fingers of our right hand, which will be simultaneously moving upwards and laterally to enable us to palpate the left adnexal structures. If during our examination we have noted a mass, but are unsure as to whether it's an adnexal or a uterine mass, one tip to help us differentiate is that when moving the cervix and uterus upwards during the bimanual exam in the attempt to palpate the uterus, a uterine mass will also be noted to move with our left hand. But an adnexal mass will not be felt to move during this manoeuvre. To complete our examination, we withdraw our fingers from within inside the vagina and then inspect the glove for the presence of any discharge or blood. We inform the patient that the examination is complete, thank them, provide them with a tissue to clean any excess lubricating gel, and then ask them to redress. Finally, we then need to document our findings, or if we're in an examination, report them to the examiner. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great free content, or if you want to make learning for med school and board exams easier, then subscribe to surgicalteaching.com and check out our expert endorsed videos, high yield revision questions, and our supportive online community. Surgical Teaching was designed by doctors to help students learn smarter. And right now, you can enjoy all of our great content for less, with 20% off our annual premium subscriptions when using the code STYouTube20. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.